Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to be talking about four food memoirs because I am obsessed with food and books. So we're just gonna combine this today. I hope you like food and books because we're gonna take a little tour of cuisine today. All right, so the first book I really wanted to start at like the beginning of the genre or maybe classics of the genre would be a better way to state that. So the first book I have to talk about is My Life in France by Julia Child with her nephew Alex Prudhomme writing and so he talked to his aunt uh, a long time and this is one of the Christmas cards that Julia and her husband sent they're so adorable you might be familiar with the movie called Julia and Julia with Meryl Streep and Amy Adams this is one of the books that that was based on and this is about Julia Child's life in France after World War II and living as expats there because uh, her husband worked for the government in France and was stationed in different places in France and she learned to cook and really it's a beautiful story about how she followed her her dream you know just learning to cook and following her passion of books how she wrote Mastering the Art of French Cooking volumes one and volume two how she started doing TV shows and how her husband was supportive every step of the way really I was just so blown away by this story and I could not stop listening to the audiobook I absolutely love Julia Child she is just amazing just go find this book some I found this copy used and it's old enough now you can probably find it in used bookstores um, or on the ebooks or something like that if you're looking for a copy and a lot of libraries most libraries I think that I've seen that I've researched in have had this book so hopefully you'll be able to find it fairly easily it is a bit long um, but I would have loved something twice as long I just love knowing about her life and there's just so much food and a passion for food in this book. Another classic book of the genre is Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. Now after Anthony Bourdain's passing a year or two ago I got on the wait list for the audio of his book and it was forever long and I finally got it a couple months ago a month ago I'm not sure and I read it and I found that very interesting because he is like this rock star chef kind of style and uh, you learn about his life and his experience going into cooking, um, being, you know, half French and traveling France the first time he had an oyster and just like all these different story origin stories of Anthony Bourdain. He also talks about his experience in the restaurant industry, his struggle with addiction and all different things. One thing I think is important about this book is it documents how sexist and difficult it was for to be in that kitchen. And what was, it just, really intense and I know David Chang has talked a lot about this how really it's not really a healthy environment for someone to learn a trade and he's been you know asking questions and asking other chefs like is this really the way that we should be teaching other chefs is there a way we could do it differently that was better for people's mental health and you know because you're not allowed to take any days off you miss weddings and everything <laughs> you miss all of these big family events you can't take vacations you can't go see a doctor like all of this different stuff and it was a very difficult environment to work in so only healthy, like certain types of people can make it. And Anthony Bourdain doesn't really touch on this a ton. He documents it and says, oh man, we're horrible. But he never says that we should have done things differently. He talks about some of the homophobic and sexist comments that people continuously make, mainly I mean, men would make in the kitchen. When he talks about women and the rare woman chef that does appear, he says, very few women can cut it in this kind of kitchen. And I'm like, uh, you know, that really it's just it's just sexism you know and I feel like Anthony Bourdain he didn't really say it was that bad you know what I'm saying he just said that this was a thing and few women can cut it no way I feel bad for women in the kitchen but uh, the women that can make it are perfect great whatever blah 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 and I'm just like Ugh. so I feel like this does document though that kind of sexism and you can see David Chang who's like the next generation of chef talking about wanting to change that and wanting to make a difference uh, and how that's going. So there is changes being made, I feel like, in the chef community. And we'll return to that in a second. The next memoir I want to talk about is um, Save Me the Plums by Ruth Reichel. This recently just came out, and Ruth Reichel has written a lot of memoirs. This one specifically is about her time being the editor of Gourmet Magazine, which eventually folded. But she was the last editor of that magazine, and I think she was there for about 10 years. And this is about how she became the editor, her experience being a food critic, and her experience with food 
I love this audiobook. I finished it in under 24 hours. I was just fascinated by this idea of where publishing, magazine publishing, and food collide. Um, but it was very interesting to hear about how food magazines work, the business behind them, the process, all the behind the scenes stuff that she didn't know going into it. So we don't know, but we're learning along with her. It was very well done. I also didn't realize that this is the same woman that uh, edited the anthology America's Best Food Writing of 2018, which I got for Christmas. She basically is like the queen of all things food writing editing. So uh, I just love her and I'm definitely gonna be reading more of her memoirs. But she's the only memoir today that isn't of a professional chef. But I thought this would be a good one to include because she has a little bit different perspective. So you might have noticed that those three chefs that I just talked about, well, chefs and a food critic, are all white. And that is because the food industry also has a problem with systematic racism in that there are not a lot of uh, chefs of color in the American food industry. And that is actually talked about in this memoir, Notes from a Young Black Chef, Kwame Onwache, and about this is about his experience being a young black chef. Now, this one was kind of hit or miss for me, but I want to talk about the positive things and the negative things. So let's start with the positive things. Um, he brings up a lot of really important points and, and good points about how racism is all throughout the food industry, even down to what type of food he is expected to cook as a high-end chef. He can't just cook what he feels like cooking. He has to cook like what they expect him to cook. So he talks about the pressure to cook Southern black dishes, cuisine, uh, and how that's not really his style. He didn't want to cook that stuff. Oftentimes other people would uh, ask him to cook African cuisine from one country and he's actually, his dad is from a different country because he's half um, African and half African American. So his dad is from one country in Africa, but they're like, oh, it's basically the same, right? And he's like, no, no, it, no, it, no, it's not. <laughs> and I appreciated him pointing that out and commenting on that. Also pointing out throughout the different stages of his, you know, rise to being head chef, about the racism that he faced in the different stages of his career. I thought that was deeply fascinating and very important. And I would say the biggest problem I had with this book is just that he is so young, right? It says right there on the cover. And while I think his story is important, I would be very interested to read his memoir if he rewrote it when he's, you know, midway through his career, at the end of his career, where he was old enough that had the maturity to look back on his younger self and just have that clarity and acknowledging, okay, I was young and I was stupid in these areas. I'm proud of what I did in these areas. You know, you know that kind of self-reflection. I feel like since he wrote it so close to when things happened, to when his restaurant folded uh, and, and didn't, you know, it closed because it, it failed. Uh, and so it's not a spoiler, sorry, but Anyway, <laughs> um, I, I wish we had seen that perspective. Obviously, he's not old enough to do that yet, so I would be very interested in reading another memoir from him when he's older. But he seems like such a talented chef, uh, but there's just that, like, youngness, like, infused throughout the book and a lack of maturity in his perspective. Not that that's bad on his part at all. It's just part of being a younger person. You just don't have that yet. So... Overall, I really enjoyed reading this perspective and it was a fresh, breath of fresh air considering how white a lot of the food memoirs are. I was thinking today that I really struggle to think of memoirs by women and by people of color and I can think of maybe a handful of others by women and uh, not many by people of color. So I'm be very interested to see in the coming years what food memoirs come out. Those are the food memoirs that I wanted to tell you about. I'm going to do another video in the future about food books, but I want to try to find more books so I can give you a bit more diverse list because right now I can only think of books by just white dudes. And they're great. I love them. Highly recommend them, but let's just have a wider range of uh, possibilities. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed those. Um, I will be back later, uh, probably closer to the end of the year with more food books because I love them. They just bring me so much joy. So I'll be sharing those with you later. I hope you, in so anyway, so I will see you in the next one guys. Bye. <music>